You know how it is at this time of year. It's either wet or windy or windy and wet and you're not really in the mood to be out in the garden. But at the same time, you are in the mood for gardening and that's where having a great gardening book comes in. So today I'm going to be letting you in on my five favourite gardening books. What they are, why I love them, why I think you're going to love them and also they make great gift ideas for gardeners. Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to the indoors rather than the outdoors. And that's because today the weather is really pretty miserable. And in fact, it's been really pretty miserable for the last couple of weeks. And I don't know about you, but quite often I'm not in the mood to work out in the garden when the weather is rubbish. But at the same time, I might be in a gardening headspace. And that for me is where having a really good gardening book comes in. Something that you can enjoy indoors, in the dry and the warm with a nice cup of tea or coffee. So I thought it might be nice to share with you my favourite gardening books, what they are and why. Because that way, if they're new to you, you might like to explore those books yourself. Or particularly at this time of year, I know a lot of people are looking for great gift ideas. And for the gardener in your life, you pretty much can't go wrong with getting them a nice gardening book. Plus, with the way this year has been, Gardening books are nice, easy, affordable things that you can either go out and buy or order online to send to somebody or to yourself. Now, just like my seed sowing videos, don't worry, you don't need to have a pen and paper at the ready to write down each of my recommendations. I'll make sure to write them in the description down below, the book and the author, and also I'll leave an affiliate link for each of the books as well. That way, if you would like to, you can choose to click through that link and order one of the books yourself. So let's get stuck in and talking about the books. Okay, so for my very first recommendation, it's going to be a coffee table book because for me, really, you can't beat having a nice coffee table book sitting out that you can just flick through now and then and enjoy, but without having to really sit down and get stuck into something. And this is the perfect coffee table book. This is called Garden Design, A Book of Ideas. Now, I was given this as a present about a year ago and I adore it. What is brilliant about this book is that it is absolutely crammed full of gorgeous pictures. Lots of things to look at that are either on a really wide scale they show off a lot of landscape work and a lot of gardens, but as well as that, they take a lot of time to include nice fine details, whether it's details about planting, about hard landscaping, or even water. And it really is fantastic. Like just take a look at those images. They really are sumptuous. What's nice about it as well, is that as well as all of the nice images, which are great if you just want to have a casual browse through, there's some brilliant information in here as well. They actually talk about some of, well, really the basics of garden design and then dealing with difficult situations and tips and tricks of the trade. I keep coming back to this book time and time again, and certainly, I have a little list that I keep to one side when I see plants that I like or when I see ideas that I like. A lot of things on that list have come out of this book, so I'm fairly certain that you are going to love this. Okay, so now that we've got the coffee table book out of the way, let's talk about a book that you're going to love if you're really into vegetable growing or any kind of productive growing, and it's this. This is The Kitchen Gardener by Alan Titchmarsh. And you might notice that I don't have the dust cover on it. In fact, I've got the dust cover here. And I took the dust cover off because I didn't want it getting wrecked because this book goes everywhere. It's either in the living room, it's in the office, it comes with me. So I keep this to one side. This is my absolute one and only go-to book when it comes to vegetable growing. There are a wide variety of great vegetable gardening books, but for me at the moment, this is absolutely perfect. I would have really grown up with Alan Titchmarsh presenting Gardener's World, 
and I've always loved his very simple, straightforward style that for me makes a lot of gardening really accessible. And that is what this book delivers. It's divided up into, well, basically four really simple sections. At the start, there's a section about the basics of setting up your vegetable garden and working in your vegetable garden. Then there are three alphabetized sections, one on vegetables, one on fruit, and one on herbs. And all you need to do is go to the vegetable that you need information on. This is opened on Brussels sprouts, and you can see it has everything from sowing dates, planting dates, harvesting dates, great tips for varieties that he recommends in his own experience, common problems that you might encounter. And all of that information is written in such a simple way, but it's also written in a way that I found as I was getting to grips with growing veg, that the language actually gave me a boost and made me feel like I can do this. And for me, that's what makes this book brilliant. Then there is one absolutely superb little section. There's about half a dozen pages, about a third of the way into the book. And it's a summary of everything that you need to get done each month of the year. It's got must do jobs. It's got jobs for vegetables and salads, herbs and fruit. And it covers everything from seed sowing to growing to pruning and to harvesting. Like I say, this is my absolute go to vegetable gardening book. I'll show you the dust cover again. It's really not that expensive for the amount of information it's got. And I truly cannot recommend this book highly enough. Now, staying on the theme of vegetable gardening, what I want to talk about next is a gardening biography, because the gardening world is obviously full of how-to books, which is great, but sometimes you want something that's going to be a little bit more in-depth and a little bit more close to the person that's actually gardening. And my recommendation is this. This is Grounded by Liz Zorab. Now, you will, I am sure, know that Liz is a good friend of mine, but putting that aside, this is a great book and I do have to recommend it. So this got released uh, earlier on this year and I read it from cover to cover in a matter of a couple of days. It was so good. What's lovely about it is it has a brilliant balance of tips and tricks that Liz has learnt along the way, but most of it is actually a deeply personal journey of her ill health and her work towards getting into better health and at the same time transforming what was effectively a bare plot, I think it was 0.8 of an acre, into a brilliant permaculture homestead where she was growing a huge amount of her own food. She was keeping livestock like ducks and really it's just an inspirational, for me, an inspirational success story. I absolutely love this book. And if you're looking for something more along the lines of a biography, whether it's for yourself or to give to someone, make sure to check out Grounded. Right, next up, let's talk about a great recommendation for an ornamental book. And it also covers a lot of garden design at the same time. And it's this. This is Planting a New Perspective by Pete Udolph and Noel Kingsbury. Pete Udolph is probably one of my most inspirational garden designers. I would probably say he's my favorite garden designer of all time. And what he specializes in and what he has really crafted over his career is a very specific look that when I would have been a lot younger would have been considered prairie planting. But realistically, he has taken it to an entirely new level. It's really what would now be considered the new perennial movement. And what he has created are these incredible perennial gardens and perennial landscapes. Pete has worked all over the world. He's designed some very famous spaces like the New York High Line. And this book covers pretty much his entire process. So as well as it being full of really inspirational images, like, check that out. Isn't that just absolutely gorgeous? 
as well as inspirational images. He talks about his thinking, about his plant choices, about exactly how he designs gardens and what you need to know if you want to be able to recreate the same yourself. He goes into so much detail that at the back of the book, he actually has created a really useful plant directory. And in this plant directory, he breaks down all of his top plants, of which there are a lot, but he's broken them down and included information not only about their height and their spread, but their seasonal interest, what they work well with. And the idea is that you can apply the same logic to lift out specific plants so that you can create the same effect in your own garden no matter what kind of garden climate you have, it really is brilliant. What's lovely as well is actually seeing his own hand-drawn garden designs. I'm gonna to have to try and find one. It's really worth it. What's lovely is being able to see exactly his thinking about how he places plants. So there's an example of some of the plans that he shows. This book, is pretty much the perfect all-in-one book. I come back to this a lot. My hope is that I'm going to be able to create this style of gardening in a large section of my garden. Here's hoping. But for now, this book is a brilliant go-to and I totally recommend it. Right, we have covered four books that I think are really brilliant. A coffee table book, a biography, a vegetable gardening book, and an ornamental garden design book. So now it's time to talk about a book that's gonna help keep you organized and work as a nice garden journal. And it's this, the RHS Gardening Diary. Now, I get that this maybe comes across as a slightly unusual or maybe even a bland book recommendation, but I really can't recommend this enough. And that's because I have a propensity to use this, my phone, way too often. And I take notes on it, I make lists on it, and about this time last year I decided that I was going to stop doing that for the garden and instead I was going to start keeping a garden journal and I used this and I'm really glad that I did. You can get this in two sizes, this is the larger desk size one, but they also do a nice little small pocket size diary. But what's great about this is it's got plenty of room to write in because each double page covers only one week and beside it, there's a really nice botanical drawing. And you can see, as I flick through it, if we go back to February, I can see that on Thursday, the 18th of February, I sowed all of my tomato and chili seeds. But equally, as I start to go through the book, I can see when they germinated, I can see when I planted them, and I can also see when I started to harvest them. I find this really invaluable. I think what's nice about it as well is writing something down in a physical form create something nice. I can keep this on my bookshelf and come back to it year after year. And each year I can get another book and start into next year's garden journal. I also think that out of all of the gardening books I'm recommending today, this is probably the easiest present to give to somebody because they can make it their own no matter what their interest is in, whether it's productive or ornamental gardening, you name it, this is going to cover it. So that's my last recommendation, the RHS Garden Diary. So there you have it, five really brilliant book recommendations for you this year. I hope you enjoy exploring them if they're books that you're not familiar with already. But you might notice that there is one book left on my table. And that's because I want to talk to you about what has to be probably my most precious favorite gardening book, but actually it's a book that's really hard to come by. And for that reason, I didn't want to include it in my top five because you might have difficulty getting hold of it. And it's this. This is Color for Adventurous Gardeners by Christopher Lloyd. For me, everybody needs at least one Christopher Lloyd book in their life. He was such an epic, gardener and garden author. He had a really beautiful, witty way of actually not just writing, but being witty in the garden as well. And that is really summed up in this book. 
To give you a little bit of history, this book was released in 2001, so I would have been about 16, 17, and it was around that age that I was really getting fired up about gardening and before I went to horticulture college. And I didn't have a lot of knowledge about garden design or how to use plants and combine them. And then this came out, and this book is so bold and so strong it is just the most amazing source of inspiration. I think probably the best way to describe it is summed up in the first couple of paragraphs on the inside of the dust cover, because it says this book is opinionated, it's controversial, and it's the most colourful book on plant associations you'll ever read. And they lift a quote out as well, where it says, the limitations imposed by rules, Christopher Lloyd writes, are a safe haven, but the adventurous gardener will want to try something different. This book goes through each colour and how you can use it with other colours for really dramatic effect. And I remember opening this for the first time because I was given it as a gift from my mum, opening it and getting to the contents page and just being hit by that colour acid green and bright purple and being hooked. Each chapter is about a specific colour. Red, nothing to fear. Enigmatic green, the truth about pink. Each chapter has a really alluring kind of title, a lovely write-up by Christopher himself in his usual kind of witty style, and the photography is absolutely spectacular and it really does show just how powerful using colour can be. I think the thing for me is that quite often with gardening books, and I have to be honest, gardening books of the late 90s and the early 2000s, they tend to date quite badly, particularly if you're talking about garden design. But Christopher Lloyd's ideas were so bold and so strong and actually so well developed over a lot of time that this is for me one of the few books that seems to transcend the decades and actually I think it is just as relevant now as it was when it came out. The downside, like I said, is I have tried to find links online that I could share with you so that you can get this but this book seems to be quite difficult to get. If I manage to find a link, I'll leave it down below, but otherwise you might have to do a little bit of searching. It's not a massive book, but it's totally worth it. And I'm really sorry because I realized I have talked about this book for quite a long time, but I could talk about this book pretty much endlessly. Like just as I browse through it, it makes me happy to look at it. Like even just check that out. Right, I'm going to stop talking about this book, but if you can get hold of it, try and find Colour for Adventurous Gardeners by Christopher Lloyd. You absolutely will not be disappointed. So that's all of my book recommendations for this year. I hope you find it interesting. I hope that there are either books that you recognise and that you agree with me, or that if there are books that you don't know, that maybe it's given you some ideas and inspiration to go out and get them yourself and try them. Either way, let me know in the comments down below, because it's always great being able to compare notes. Also, hopefully it may have just got you out of a Christmas present buying dilemma, nightmare. If it has, you're welcome. No need to thank me. <laughs> As ever, if you enjoyed the video, please do make sure to give it a like. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit the bell icon because that way you'll be notified when I post my next video. And until next time, see you later.